From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. All right, today David Bach responds, a crazy, crazy rumor I heard about a microphone company. Overpriced mics, a microphone art update, and something you just have to see. Let's just call this the Friday Roundup. So first and foremost, David Bach uh, got back to me. I emailed David Bach after what happened. And this was his response to me. Laid off, no explanation. No explanation. So this continues to be curious. David Bach's departure from Universal Audio. Laid off, no explanation. No explanation. And it's not like David Bach was just some dude. <laughs> David Bach is a legend. Then he was like the senior microphone designer guy at Universal Audio. So again, really no idea what's going on in this situation. And, uh, you know, you know how you always think to yourself, oh, we'll find out eventually. Well, given all of the possible non-disclosure agreements and non-compete agreements and so on and so forth, and who knows what kind of, um, who knows what kind of uh, separation package he got and what, what his deal with Universal Audio entails. Does he get a royalty for each Bach, uh, UA Bach microphone that's sold, that is now sold with his name on it and he's not part of the company anymore? So this continues to be a fluid and um, really odd situation. So we'll just have to wait and see. But if you think this is odd, I heard a rumor that is just so insane, just freaking insane, that I, I have to talk about it now. I heard about this late last year. And the reason I haven't spoken about it yet was because I was digging around to try to find out if this is true or not, because it is so wild and so out there. But the source of this, the person who told me this, is, is an executive at a large pro audio company. Not just some random person. Not some conspiracy theorist with a tinfoil hat sitting in his, in his basement. This was told to me by, by an actual executive, a senior executive. And I want to mention this because if any of you have heard any anything like this, I want to know. All right, I'm kind. I'm crowdsourcing my research. I heard, this is what I was told. Right, I, I, I this is so inflammatory and, and and odd. But I was told that Rode has been compensating influencers or people on the internet to speak badly about Rhodes' competitors, to leave bad reviews and to kind of generally trash their competition. Now, this sounds really strange, except again, the source of this is, 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 would make it seem like, why, why would this person say something to me, right? Now, they obviously, he, he, this person mentioned that they have very good reason to believe this is true. <laughs> and after, after this happened, I emailed a bunch of people I knew in Pro Audio. And I got a response. And this was around the holidays. So, and I got a response right away from someone who is extremely high up at another microphone company. Not, not road. And they said, they said, that they couldn't believe something like that would happen. That some that the that person that company would have to have uh, a lot of uh, money to throw around to do something like that, right? Just because he's like, well, this is this is a business with a lot of brotherhood, and you know that was the implication. But he did say he didn't completely dismiss it. He said that if you do find out anything, I will investigate fully. So he wasn't dismissing the possibility. And somebody else I spoke to, and I have to be very careful about how I describe this conversation, um, left it so that basically I was left with a response that uh, generally told me, maybe? So this other person who, who uh, <laughs> uh, this other source, uh, did not dismiss it. So I, I'm, I have trouble believing it, but again, I don't. Because 
as I was thinking about this, as I was talking about this with somebody else, somebody else entirely, they said to me, didn't you, didn't you hear something? Weren't we talking about something like this? And he was talking about like, like 10 years ago, like a long time ago. Didn't Roe do something like really, really sleazy? Something, something, something. And I was like, I, I vaguely remember this conversation and I, I kind of don't remember the details. And he was like, you know, the, the guy who founded Road is like a really rich douchebag. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't know that. So anyway, the point I'm making is, I'm, I'm not sure whether to believe it or not. But if any of you have heard anything of this nature at all, let me know. Okay? Because if this is true, if this is actually true, this is the greasiest, scumbaggiest thing ever. And anybody, any influencer or video creator, any YouTuber or anybody on Instagram who has done this for road or, you know, again, this is, this is, I don't know. Anybody who has done this, we need to find out who you are and take you out back and, and beat you with a bag of oranges. I mean, I mean, seriously. So, um, I don't know. If you know anything, let me know. All right, moving on. Overpriced microphones. So, Tijuana Arrow, Tijuana Arrow Chacal says, first of all, excuse my broken English. He says in perfectly fine English. It's always a pleasure to watch your videos. Could you make a video about extremely overpriced mics and extremely best bang for the buck affordable mics? Yeah, that English, I don't understand it at all. It's perfect English, dude. So, um, all right. Bang for your best bang for your buck mics. That one is tough. But first, let's talk about overpriced mics. Let's talk about mics that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> All right, let's start with the Lewitt 1040, LCT 1040. Now, you've seen this thing, right? $3,500 for this hybrid uh, FET slash tube mic, and it's got all these different settings and this and that. And, you know, I have a buddy of mine in Japan, a VO guy, and he, he had one. I think he demoed one, and he sent me some clips of it. And I thought it sounded pretty good. And then I, I couldn't guess what it was, right? And as, as the sound changed, I was like, oh, okay, right? I, I, I kind of had an idea. And overall, he, he had gone through a range of different sounds on it. And there was maybe one or two settings that I thought would really work for voiceover. Otherwise, I mean, I didn't think that it was anything special. For $3,500 in this market, in this economy, right now for them to introduce this mic, and I know they introduced it last year, but this mic is going nowhere. Nobody's buying this mic. Nobody's talking about this mic. You know who talked about this mic? The like 10 people who got one for free. To review all the glowing free reviews <laughs> but nobody nobody in voiceover nobody i know is is saying wow you know what you got to get the lewitt to lct 1040 <laughs> and a vo buddy of mine said a while back friends do not let friends use lewitt <laughs> and so uh, you know i i do feel like lewitt has potential to be good but I feel like their offerings are kind of, they're misfires. And the LCT 1040, I think that you can get a good sound out of it. It just looks stupid. It looks freaking stupid. It looks bad. And this, this, this boxy look, right? It does not look sleek or cool or anything. It doesn't even look industrial. It looks, it looks like some kind of fake prop from like the 80s you know it just it looks it's it's stupid looking <laughs> and then you've got this tube window in it where you can see the tube glowing which is such a stupid what's the point what is the point of showing me that the tube is glowing right especially when you cannot and you cannot replace the tube it's a 12 ax7 or maybe an ay7 but it's it's a variant of that nature and you can't replace it yourself so if that tube ever went, you'd have to send that mic back to Lewitt. 
And what happens if Lewitt is not in business anymore and you have to find somebody to do it yourself? I, this is absolutely, the Lewitt LCT 1040 would be my biggest microphone to avoid at all. I'm not, I honestly, I know that some of you like your Lewitt mics and that's cool. If it works on you, that's great. But I have not heard a Lewitt mic that blew me away. And this one for $3,500 before tax? No way. <laughs> no. As they say in Texas, El Paso. So, um, what else? Oh yeah, overpriced mic. Earthworks SV33. As a former SV33 owner, I can tell you that this mic is definitely not worth it. It's a cool mic. Maybe, but you know what? It, it has a semi-cool look. It's like kind of cool. It's like Blade Runner meets Grandma's doily kind of look to it. And uh, it, 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 here's the thing. So Earthworks makes this mic to try to compete in, in the, the strata of like a, a U87. But it it just has its own sound. It's not, it's, it was the wrong mic. It honestly was a valiant effort that failed miserably. So <laughs> I don't want to laugh, but they just, they just discontinued it to show how, how little faith the, uh, <laughs> the public had in this microphone. Now, I, I did some great sounding recordings with it, but overall I wasn't 100% happy with it. And I would very much, I would actually like to get one again at some point and try and try with the new stack to uh, see how I can voice this thing better. But overall, I, I just, I think that's another mic that, uh, oh, way overpriced. And you know what? The, the ethos, the $400 Earthworks ethos is every bit as good as the SV33. It just has a, a deeper bottom end. But I think, you know, same 30 to 30K uh, range and a tighter polar pattern. I almost made a hand gesture that looked obscene. So, and a tighter polar pattern that uh, that would work better, I think, for voiceover. Because I got the SV33, you know, actually, actually is an animation voice microphone. Because I like the idea of being able, the wider cardioid, <laughs> so silly, <laughs> the wider cardioid and being able to range a little bit more around the mic doing <laughs> doing character voices. Another mic I would know, I would definitely avoid. And you know what? Honestly, I know a lot of you feel the same way about the U87. Because in the United States, the U87 is $3,200 on its own, $3,600 if you have to buy it with the, uh, <laughs> with the shock mount. So, uh, especially when you can buy that microphone in Europe for $1,000 less. So you would be better off Take a vacation, <laughs> spend the money, fly to London, right? Fly to the UK, go to Funky Junk, go to wherever, buy it, and then fly back. It would be cheaper and you'd have a better time. Anyway, all right. Th there are, and I'm not going to talk about the over overpriced, the very expensive tube mics out there, like the U67 and, of course, the M49. M49V, right? Because those are microphones for different people than us, than us voiceover weirdos. <laughs> those are music microphones for like big studios to, to impress your clients at a big studio. And I mean, you know, I, I don't know if I would ever use a, an actual U67 or an M49V for voiceover, quite honestly. I am done trying to, trying to accommodate uh, two mics. That's why I built this. So, um, yeah, all right, bang for your buck, mics. This is such a tough one. I, I have been searching for a long time. And, I, you know, I've been talking about trying to find, like, a good bang for your buck, mic. Now, we looked at the Soyuz 1973 for $799. It's a good-sounding mic. But, it, again, that's a one-trick pony mic. Most, most mics are one-trick pony mics. And I think an affordable mic, if we're, you're talking bang for your buck mic, I think you're getting good value at $799 for the uh, 1973 because I think it's comparable to the bomblet. But, um, you know, still $799 is, is still a price point that may not uh, fall into the uh, affordable range for, for some people. So if you're looking at mics that are sub 
$500, let's say. I mean, earth or ethos is the first thing comes to mind. $400. What a great mic for $400. And I know it won't work for everyone, but I think if you sound good on an SM7B, I think check out the ethos. Um, other bang for your buck mics, and it's a little bit more, but the 3U Audio GZ251, 599 bought directly from 3U Audio, 3U Audio at gmail.com. Absolute bang for your buck mic. You talk about a mic that on, on its own, if it was sold through normal channels, you're buying it from the guy. <laughs> you're buying it from the guy who has a microphone capsule factory. Who, who, who builds capsules for some of the biggest boutique companies in the world, all right? You're talking about a guy who has his own factory. So he builds his own microphones and then he sells them directly to you. So there's no distributor. There's no retailer in between. You're, you're jumping right to the wholesaler, right? To the creator, not even the wholesaler, the creator. So this microphone for $599, the GZ251, is easily equivalent to any $1,000, $1,500 microphone. No lie. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the videos. So I think the 3U audio stuff, definite bang for the buck. The Warbler series for 300 and what is it, 349? You're getting some amazing microphones. And I think the actual, the, the cardioid only Warblers, aren't they still only like 299? Right? I wish, I wish I still had my warblers, but th I bought them back at the, during the stage when I was just buying and selling mics like a total maniac. But those are great mics. Um, bang for your buck mics I would, I would avoid. You know those little body ones, like the Stellar mic and like the Roswell mics? I really find that when you put a microphone in that tiny little body, right? And I, I have one. I have not, not one of those, but I built a... Um, I built the Fuchs DIY 87 in a tiny body. And it sounds okay, but you know what? It just misses something. It misses something because that head basket is too small. So I would, I would avoid those microphones. Um, I know that there's some of you who like the King B stuff, but I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, in terms of pro stuff, because I'm, I'm talking about like pro stuff. Best bang for your buck, Mike. I don't know if I've, if I've identified that yet. That's why I, I kind of think like you DIY stuff. Best bang for your buck is DIY. And I think you're looking at the mic part stuff, they have, they have a new, what is it, their T67 kit? That looks really compelling. That I think could be a really good voiceover mic. And I think that, that kit sells for like 425 29 I don't know, something like that. Sub 500. So if you're, if you're inclined to build. That might be the way to go. But I do not have a definitive uh, best uh, affordable bang for your buck uh, mic recommendation. You know, the Ethos, the Icon Pro, if you like that sound, um, that's, that stuff is great. And especially if you're a content creator and you want something that looks cool on camera. So uh, I, I'm going, as I continue to uh, my tone quest, uh, trust me, I am always looking for bang for your buck mics. And um, we'll just have to see what, what else we discover. I know that isn't the perfect answer, but that's all I have for now. So, all right, microphone art update. So um, I showed you the, um, the print on canvas. And so I did another one. I actually realized I printed the wrong one on canvas. <laughs> I printed the, the draft before the final draft version on canvas. Uh, so I printed the right one on canvas and I did this one without the little, the text or the signature. I just, I don't know. I don't know about putting my signature on stuff. I, in the same way that I'm happy with my voiceover work being completely <laughs> like anonymous, you know, I don't think you want to see my, my signature and all the text on there. I think it might be cooler without text, right? Or if there is text on there or something, it's going to be a lot more discreet. So, but what do you think, right? I'm putting them side by side here. Let me know which one you like better, all right? Because I have this plan. And the plan is I, I, found, I found a way to do canvas prints on demand in an Etsy store. So I'm going to start an Etsy store. And in that Etsy store, I'm going to sell microphone artwork, uh, T-shirts, <laughs> mugs, you know, I mean, merch, right? But I mean, really for the artwork, because the, I'm, I'm really serious about this artwork. I mean, again... 
I am so obsessed with microphones. I am always thinking about microphones. I am always thinking about voiceover. I am always humming to myself. I am always doing doing vocal exercises everywhere in the shower, outside when I'm like with the dogs out in the backyard. I'm always thinking about microphones, which is why in my spare time, I do microphone art because I am completely out of my mind. So my obsession is spilling over into a visual graphic medium. And I want to share these because I like them. I think they're cool and I think you might like them too. And I have a lot of really interesting stuff coming. But this first series of, uh, of four um, will be coming soon, as soon as I get this all straightened out because I want to do it right. But I'm thinking it's going to be through an Etsy store. And the other cool thing about the Etsy store that occurred to me that is if it ever comes around that I sell, personally sell, a microphone, right? I could do it through the Etsy store. Um, now, honestly, what I'm trying to do with the prototypes and everything else is I need a, a production partner because I can't be sitting there um, building microphones. And really, it's, it's not so much building, but it's the, it's the product fulfillment. It's any sort of service issue. Because years ago, I was building modding custom microphones. And I had a bunch of people who would buy them, right? And they were like, this microphone's great and that and that. And um, one guy bought one from me. And then he sold it um, to, to a friend of his. And he said his friend got it and it was working for a week and then it stopped working all of a sudden. And uh, could you fix it? And I'm like, you know, this is a second party thing. We, I, I don't know what your, your friend did. And I was kind of like really hesitant to get involved. But I was like, just send it over. Right. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm busy. And this, there was some things going on. I'm like, I might not be able to get to this for a couple of weeks, but just send it and all that. And I never heard back. Because I think his friend broke the mic. And so I'm dealing with service issues on this stuff. And I, I, just, I just don't have the bandwidth for that. I need, a, I need a partner. I need a microphone company or a partner to deal with that. I'll design it. I'll create it. I'll make videos about it. But I can't be the one manufacturing and fulfilling it. I just, I just don't have the bandwidth for it. But maybe on occasion, maybe a prototype goes up for sale, maybe a one-off. And I can do that through the Etsy store. So that's coming too. So um, keep an eye open for that. All right. What else? All right. Let me get out of here soon. So real quick, shout out to uh, a couple of different people. So first of all, Red Games. Red Games, who does uh, Crayola Create and Play, they left this comment. How nice is this? We absolutely love working with you, Mark. Perfect every time. So... You know how great that makes you feel when the client loves your work like that? I mean, you know, it happens with me a lot. But I mean, uh, but in this case, I'm very, I'm extremely pleased because this Crayola gig that I've been doing for years is absolutely one of my favorite gigs of all. Yeah, Crayola create and play. <laughs> yeah, I love working with Crayola. So, um, thank you, Red Games. Uh, that just made my week. Uh, that is such a great comment. I'm actually going to get this framed. <laughs> I'm going to get this comment framed. So, and then, uh, oh yeah, shout out to Scott Ziegler. Dude. So my old pal, Scott Ziegler. I, I just saw that he subscribed. So I hope you're watching. <laughs> best New York Times bestselling author, Scott Ziegler. He's a good dude. And if you like, if you like suspenseful horror stories, go check his stuff out. He's got like, you can listen to his podcasts. Like he, this Scott Sigler is the guy who invented the serialized fiction podcast back in the day. And we're talking about 2005, right? So back in the era, you know, you know, I was one of the first generation podcasters and Scott Sigler was right before me. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of people. Oh, their oh, oh, their podcasting careers to Scott Sigler. So, he's a good dude, and he's he's a funny dude too. I like Scott. So, uh, hey Scott. Um, all right. So one more thing. So, uh, you know, I'm watching. When I watch YouTube, I actually don't watch videos about gear at all. That's the one time I escape from it. 
Usually it's funny because my wife and I, we watch YouTube before bed because we find some like stuff that'll just kind of, not necessarily boring stuff, but unwindy stuff. So we watch sometimes like food videos, like dancing bacons. <laughs> so, um, and we watch fail videos, right? And, and then we were looking at something, we were looking at something, and I think this is from Hillsboro, Oregon. So this is, uh, <laughs> this comes from a realtor, uh, telling us about Hillsboro, Oregon. So uh, check this out. The school districts here are truly top notch because many of the employees of Intel are your neighbors and their children go to the same schools as yours do. Yeah, stay in school, kids. All right. We talked about a lot today. I want to know what you're thinking. All right. <laughs> Until next time, leave a comment. This is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.